isn't there to love about New Mexico? It is the land of enchantment. Lots of public land for us to access for hunting, fishing, wildlife viewing. I'm a bird watcher. My husband's a bird watcher. We've got birds all over the place. It's a gorgeous place. It's a beautiful place. From the grasslands to the high alpine trees to the low desert flats. Chaco Canyon and the Badlands, the Bosque and the Sandias. The beautiful mesas and canyons carved by the rivers and a sort of rich and complex culture here that goes back millennia. New Mexico to me represents some of the last and best of our authentic culture. I love the people. I love our diversity. I love everything about the state. I was born and raised in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I come from a traditional land use family. What I mean by that is we heat our homes with wood that we harvest from the national forest here. We fill our freezers with wild game. We pick pinon in September. We have all these traditional land use values that so many of us New Mexicans cherish. We have 22 cloudy days a year. When you get up to a high place, you can see for 50 or 100 miles. New Mexico is our place. It's our history, it's our current reality, and it's our future. I'm going to just track the plume of emissions to see how far, how far away off-site they're going. I'm certified to use a camera that makes visible the invisible methane pollution coming from oil and gas facilities. Methane is the primary component of natural gas. Uh, the natural gas that we use to heat our homes, to cook our dinner, that is primarily methane. It's a very potent greenhouse gas, more than 80 times more potent pound for pound in the short term than carbon dioxide. Molecule for molecule, methane is a very potent heat trapper. It is unambiguous, unequivocal, that the temperature is getting warmer. The only way to explain the observed warming in a plausible way is by increasing greenhouse gases. Escaping along with that methane, are pollutants that can cause cancer, that can cause the formation of smog. The concern of, uh, for the oil and gas industry from an ozone perspective is really the volatile organic compound emissions coming off of the various operations. And ground level ozone as a compound can cause a variety of respiratory problems. Uh, it exacerbates asthma. It's been linked uh, very strongly to increased emergency room uh, visits to decrease life expectancies and in some case mortality. My role I feel like is just to be a voice for this land that you know is just being torn apart. There's a lot of changes that have happened ever since the gas and oil has come into our community. You can smell whatever that fume is and sometimes it gets really bad. I've noticed that there's an increase in asthma in families, from children to elders. It's really affecting a lot of children. Now I have to use an inhaler. That sucks. I didn't have to carry an inhaler around with me before. My mom too, you know, she's constantly coughing. Our health in this county right now, asthma is high. There's some homes right over there. And so imagine if your toddler is outside playing in the yard and these emissions are blasting into your backyard. In 2014, NASA scientists discovered a hotspot of methane. A methane hotspot the size of Delaware hovering above the Four Corners region. It was the highest concentration of methane they found anywhere in the US. NASA and NOAA have gone back and, and directly tied that problem to uh, poorly maintained oil and gas development in the San Juan Basin. There's three primary ways that methane can be wasted. The first are leaks, another is venting, and then the third way is through flaring. 
and that's the intentional burning off of the gas. This is perfectly good methane gas that they are burning. It's like burning money that could be going to New Mexico schools. Do you know how much taxpayer-owned natural gas has been wasted that is vented, flared, and leaked since 2009? I'll tell you the answer. In New Mexico, it, this happens on a yearly basis. In one year, a hundred million dollars are lost. A hundred million hundred dollars million, are lost. Millions, millions of dollars a year, literally going up in smoke. A hundred million dollars worth a year just from New Mexico. This is the Devil Springs Ranch. I grew up down the road in Farmington, New Mexico. I went to school there and had a career there. I worked in every facet of the oil and gas business as a risk manager. Production, development, geology, every facet. But it wasn't until Jane and I moved out here to start this little ranch that I really understood what living with oil and gas was like. A few weeks ago, it was all natural terrain, naturally sloped, juniper trees, pinon trees, mountain mahogany bushes, sagebrush. The pipeline's already laid in the ground, so this is a fast-moving site. About 2005, the drilling started and now we've got about 20 wells in our area. They always leak, these well sites always leak. If you go to any one of these sites, they're all leaking. Industry is pouring methane on top of us. The other toxic chemicals come with it. Those are the things that we have to live with. This is land that's on our ranch. The old companies get a lot of perks. The rancher doesn't get nothing. All we get is a headache. These are the things that people need to know that aren't from here. New Mexico is a state that is tired of being at the bottom of lists. You would think that after so many years of the presence of not just oil and gas, but also the coal industry, that we could say that New Mexico was higher up on the economic scale, at poverty level, at education levels, and yet Despite all of that industry, despite um, all of those years of production in the state, um, we're still among the lowest on the ranks throughout the country. Compared to all the other states in the nation, our children are not doing that well in New Mexico. And in fact, we're about 49th in child well-being. We give away about a billion dollars to extractive industries every year. What we've done since the 70s is we have basically built a tax code and then we've carved holes in it. So as a result, we now have a tax code that looks like Swiss cheese. The reason was to create an industry during the 70s sort of oil crisis. But the question today is, do we still need those incentives? Are we still trying to subsidize a growing industry or is it mature and can it stand on its own? We need to capture these resources and we need to utilize the royalties, for example, for our schools, for our kids, for our hospitals, for our institutions. We know that the technology is there, it's just will the industry have the courage to look at themselves and suggest that maybe spending a few extra dollars to capture methane for the greater good of, uh, of the planet makes a lot of sense. I worked in the oil and gas industry for almost 30 years. Worked everywhere from Bloomfield, New Mexico to the Norwegian Sea. Then spent quite a few years back in Houston headquarters in the upper levels of the company. Since I retired, I bought a ranch and I spent a lot of time trying to restore the pasture and the range and get the forest ready for climate change and what that will bring. So far, the industry's record on reducing methane waste has been poor to non-existent. Fortunately, we have a real-world example uh, here in Colorado with methane regulation and the Colorado rules that were put in place three or four years ago. What brought all the players to the table in Colorado was a governor, Governor Hickenlooper, that said he had zero tolerance for methane pollution and waste. I was able to convince the largest operators in the oil and gas industry that long-term, 
their willingness to be a partner in clean air and their willingness to really attack methane leakage would be a big part of how the public would you know, look at their, that social contract that any company needs to operate in your state. industry was used to doing things in a certain way, but as we've worked with them, as we've both made compromises, they've adopted more and more of an attitude and an understanding that you can help the environment and still maintain your bottom line. We take care of nearly a thousand wells here in the San Juan Basin and about a third of those are ours that we operate and own. It'd be great if a guy would come out and say, hey, you know, you, did you know that one of your gathering lines, you know, we detected a leak, you know, that we couldn't detect. I mean, that would be awesome. Capturing methane provides an opportunity for a triple win. The environment benefits, industry benefits, and the state benefits. If you implement sensible rules, you can generate additional revenue that then you can invest in your people. You can invest in an infrastructure. And that's what really makes an economy grow. That's what we need to do here in New Mexico. And in reality, there is plenty of money to go around for our schools, but we're actually giving those dollars away. Right now, by default, we are prioritizing extractive industries and other special interests above our schools. That is what is reflected in our tax code. I don't know of too many states I love more than New Mexico. You know, Colorado, we really branded ourselves as clean air, clean water, blue skies, the mountains, this kind of Western ethic. Uh, New Mexico should own that. <laughs> I mean, New Mexico is the land of enchantment, and yet the state it objectively hasn't lived up to that vision. And I hope that going forward, you'll get people that are gonna hold that as the top priority because once you step up and say, we're gonna be the state where we have clean air and clean water, and we're gonna really make that a priority and we're gonna celebrate innovation around finding inexpensive ways to make sure we get rid of pollution, but we're gonna be the cleanest and the best. Then all of a sudden these young entrepreneurs are gonna to wanna to come to your state. The doorway is open. The world is waiting for New Mexico to assume its role as the next it state. When we get this right, environmentalists and the oil and gas industry are going to be sitting at the table together talking about all the things that they agree on and how by cooperating they're going to provide a tremendous solution for the state that'll be a multi-generational fix to some of our most intractable problems. One of my favorite quotes that I often talk about with my parishioners comes from Albert Einstein. He once said that no problem can be solved by the same level of consciousness that caused it. And I believe that if we're going to be dealing with these complex environmental issues that we're facing, we've got to move to a deeper level of consciousness. We all want the same thing. I mean, who, who doesn't want clean water, clean air to breathe? This isn't us against the government. This isn't us against corporations. This is all of us working together to figure out how we can meet all of our varying needs economic needs, health needs, community needs, and the needs of our kids in the future. We are all in this together. <laughs>